everyone and welcome. This is Chloe at Cousin DIY. Today we're going to visit another trend in 2021, which is the necklace or purse bag. Here's an example of one that I previously made. This is a small one, probably would hold credit card, tissues, money, and uh, the chain is long enough so that it goes over your head and this little flap opens. You have sides, so it has some depth to it. And um, today we're going to make one actually large enough to hold my cell phone. So I'm going to get set up and I'll be right back. This is my cell phone and to get started, I took some rough measurements. I want to make it a little bit wider than the width of my, my phone. We'll be cutting this plastic canvas, which will be the base for our needlework. I did some calculations and I came up with the measurements three and three sixteenth inches wide by five and seven eighth inches high. When you're cutting plastic canvas, it's important to make sure that you cut even with the bar, with one of the bar lines. You, your canvas consists of these little square holes and these bars. So I'm going to go ahead Three, three sixteenths right there. So as you see, I'm cutting as flush as I can to the bar. And then I want to go up to uh, five and seven eighths which would be right. I'm going to turn it this way to make it easier for myself. And that lines up with this bar right here. I want to double check and make sure that's right before I cut. And it is. I'm going to cut I'll go back to this side. There you go. I have a piece that has bars all along the edges. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the remaining pieces. I need a matching front. Uh, I determined that the depth I want uh, for the sides is 13 sixteenths and the same for the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those pieces and I'll be right back. Okay, now that I have all my pieces cut, I have a front and a back, I have sides, two sides, I have bottom and a top and a flap. So I'm going to do the front first. I'll set these aside. Next we have to load, uh, for this project I should tell you that for the previous small bag I showed you I used floss and our instructions will give you that product number and tell you how I made that. For this one, I'm going to use hemp. And this is the hemp. I'm using the middle color. We'll probably use three or four of these. I'm cho choosing not to use these colors. I'm just using this variegated color. So I have taken a length off the card and we now have to load it onto a darning needle. 
Now I'm showing you two different darning needles. You, you will choose one that will fit through the hole of your canvas easily. So you want the widest eye that you can get that will fit through the hole easily. Because you're going to go, be going in and out of each hole uh, several times. So I think I'm going to start with the small needle, the shorter needle. And I'm going to just take like an arm's length to get started. You'll, if you use too long of a length at first, this tends to get twisted and snag and, and we don't want that. Next, I'm using our needle threader. Put that through the eye of the needle. Put the hemp cord through the loop and then make sure to pinch those wires because if you pull from here, this is fairly fragile. Um, we're pulling a, a lot through here. It'll probably break off. The wires might break off. So um, a little tip that I find helpful is to take needle nose pliers and use those to pull those wires through. Otherwise you might be apt to go through a lot of these needle threaders. Okay. So I'm going to leave a short tail on the working end and I'm going to start the second hole in from the right hand top. And I want to leave a little tail. I'm going to capture that tail as I work across. And I'm going to use a cross stitch pattern on all these panels. So I've gone ahead and counted all the holes and I've decided that I'm going to make my first cross stitch pattern working with four holes. So one, two, three, four. I want to cross this first one over and go down through there. I'm going to come up and I'm going to go down through that hole. Make sure that your hemp cord isn't twisted. Now you'll see that this stitch crosses over that stitch. I want to make sure as I work my way across the canvas that that stitch always is on top of the first stitch or the first cross. So to accomplish that, I want to come, you're always, if your tail comes out at the bottom, your next entry should be at the back on the top. In the reverse, if your cord comes out of the top, it would be the opposite. So I'm going to go through this next hole and I'm going to go on top of that tail that we're going to hide. Pull that through. Now I'm going to connect back over to this hole from the previous stitch. Now the cord came out of the bottom, so we want to go up. I'm going to go through that hole and I'm going to cross over and come back through that hole. If you find that your cord starts to twist, just like run your fingers down the length of it to get the twists or the kinks out. I'm just going to keep repeating that. And as, as long as I have a tail showing up there, I'm going to cap, I'm going to 
capture that tail underneath my stitch on the back side of the canvas. I'm going to work my way across the top here and then I'll show you how to start the next row. Okay, now we're at the end of this first row. For the next row, I'm going to use five holes. And I came out at the bottom of this one. I want to make sure my stitches, my top stitch is going to cross over the top. So my first stitch, I'm going to count down five. One, two, I'm going to start with the end of my previous row. That will be one, two, three, four, five. Oops. I'm going to cross back over there. And you can see my cord is starting to get a little short. Not to worry, I can show you how to finish that off and add on more. Okay, this tail is getting pretty short. So we'll go back through to the back side. And on the back side, we're going to take the needle and I'm just going to slide it behind these stitches and I'll come out right here. I find it helpful to use the needle nose pliers. Pull that tail out. Carefully take your scissors and snip that tail. And that is nicely hidden. As you can see on the front side, you can't even tell. So now I need to thread my needle again. Again, I'm going to take, oh, like one and a half arms lengths. Load this onto my needle through the eye of the needle, add the cord, use my needle nose pliers to pull that through the eye. Okay. Now I want to continue on um, the back sometimes won't be perfect because of where you're adding and ending, uh, ending off cords. But on the top side, the front side, you'll never see it. We're going to start leaving a tail. Cross over. My cord is wanting to kink on me, so I'm going to be very careful as I pull it through. Leave that tail. Go back up, capture that tail on the back side. Now I'm just going to continue working my way back across this row on the canvas, continuing my stitch. And I'll keep going back and forth. What I'm doing is alternating. I'm doing a four hole cross stitch, a five hole cross stitch. I'm going to do four, five, four, five, four, five all the way down the canvas. And if I've calculated correctly, I should end up with an even number to end with a row of four. So I'll just keep working, adding cord as I need it.
Okay, now that this is complete, we're going to hide our tail, finish our tail off by going, running it through the back of our stitches on the back side. I'll go a little bit further. And we'll trim that off. The next step is to cross stitch the other panels using the same technique. The back, the sides, the bottom, the top, and the flap. I'm going to do that now and I'll be back. Here's all my completed pieces. Next, I'm going to choose which panel I want to be the front. And I'm going to choose this one. They're, they're stitched exactly the same, but I kind of like the looks of this one. The next step is to attach our bicycle pendant onto this front panel. I want to figure out approximately where I want it. The flap will be up here. So I think we want it right around there. And because the loops on this accent are smaller than the, uh, the darning needle, the eye of the darning needle, we are going to use this collapsible needle. It's very, very thin and fine. So I'm going to load some cord through the eye. Oops, let's try the other end. And I'm going to try to, I'm going to work that needle through the cross stitch, pull my cord through, go through that loop on the accent, and again this is where needle nose pliers come in handy, make sure that's where I want it. that works and then I'm going to fish it back through and I'm going to make a knot on the back side to attach that loop Then I'm going to trim, trim that, and then I'm going to do the same with the loop on the other side of the accent. Next step is going to be to finish off this top edge of the front panel and I'm going to start by pulling my tail through the back side, hiding it behind some stitches and the overcast stitch is simply you go up and you go down through the next And you just keep repeating that. And it finishes off this raw 
edge. Okay, now that we've made our way all across the top, I'm going to go ahead and hide the tail on the back side of the canvas through the stitches. Oops. Go a little bit further. Oops, I don't want a knot there. And then we'll just trim that. And you can see how we have a nice finished edge now on the top of our canvas. Now, next I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the top edge of the two sides because they won't be joined to anything. And I'm going to do the side edges of the top and then I'm going to go ahead and do the three edges, the width and the length of the flap. I'm going to go ahead and do that now and we'll be back. Next it's time to start connecting everything together. I have threaded on a, an arm's length of cord onto my darning needle. And I think we'll start with uh, attaching on the bottom of the front panel. I will take the bottom of the necklace bag and we're going to use the whip stitch to start joining these together. And what you do is you place right sides together and the first connection we'll make is along that bottom. I'm going to start by hiding my tail. I'm going to bring that through a couple stitches on the bottom piece. Right about there, hiding that tail. And the whip stitch is used to join two pieces of plastic canvas together. First step is to go down through that hole. want to hold my tail, I want that to stay in. And we're just going to keep going. I'm going to go back through that one more time. And then I'm going to run stitches joining those holes together all the way down. Now that I've made my way across the bottom of the front panel and one end of or one side of the bottom, the next step is going to be to join a side. So to do that, I'm going to put the right side of my of this side here and I'm going to keep stitching and joining. Okay, let's see. Next, I think there's lots of different way, uh, 
choices to make in what order you connect everything, but I think, I think I'm going to start by, I'm going to start by adding, start adding the back, put right sides together, and then I'm going to join these together here. And then I'm, if I have enough cord left, I'm going to join that side to the bottom there. I cut another arm's length of cord and I'm going to thread it onto my needle. I'm going to continue working my way across the bottom of the back panel, connecting it to this side of the bottom panel. Okay, now we have those two connected together. I think my next step is going to be to connect the other side to this side of the back. Okay, now that we've worked our way and connected those two, the side to the back, I think the next step is going to be, the next logical step is to attach the top because we've ended right here. So I'm going to put the right side of the top panel here. I want to make sure these are going to stay nice and square. Come back down through there. We have left to connect this side to the front, this bottom, to the bottom of that side, the bottom of this side, to that side of the bottom. I think we'll do that next. And then the last step will be to add the flap. The last thing is to connect the chain. So we're just going to, the chain is all connected, so I'm going to cut it right here. I'm going to take a six millimeter jump ring and open it. I'm going to go through the last hole on the top side on the back near the flap and connect one end of the chain. Put 
close that up nice and snug. And at this point, you can determine how long you want it. You definitely want it long enough to pull over your head because we're not going to put a clasp on the back, although you could if you wanted to. So I think I want mine to hang and that will go oh, right around. Right around here. Make sure it'll still come over my head and it will. I'll add a couple inches and then I'm going to cut the chain again. Use another six millimeter jump ring to attach the other side of the chain to the other side of the purse. Bring it through that last open it quite large to get it, fish it through that top, no, the back hole right here and close it nice and snug. And let's see what it will hold. It will hold my, my phone. It will hold my license credit card and it'll hold a little bit of cash. Here you go. If you make your own necklace bag, we'd love to see it. Go to Instagram and share it with us on hashtag create with cousin. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye.